Isaiah said to the Lord, said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God wants us to know, even when we aren't sure ourselves, God wants us to experience God's presence, even when we think we can handle life on our own. God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. <clears throat> we light these candles, the candle of joyous hope, of proclaimed peace, of deep everlasting joy, and today of presence that speaks of love as a sign that no matter our circumstance, we know we are not alone. Today, we relight the candles of hope, peace, and joy. Now we light the candle for the fourth Sunday in Advent. This is the candle of love. Let us pray. God of hope, peace, joy, and love, hold us tight in your loving arms this week. Shower us with assurance of your abundant, never-ending love. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Sunrise. We're glad you're here to worship with us. Um, got a special treat in store for you today. This is our annual cr uh, Christmas worship concert. Choir and orchestra has been working several weeks uh, to put together this gift for our congregation and, and for the community. But before we get into that, um, I'd like to invite you to stand and uh, stand as you're able and let's uh, join together in our opening hymn.
You may be seated. Welcome to Sunrise United Methodist Church and our Christmas worship conference and concert. I am glad, we are glad that you are here today, whether you're here in person or joining us online. I do believe you will get a glimpse of God's love and grace. So my name is Tiffany Keith. I'm the lead pastor here and the one leading us in this beautiful music today is our interim music director, David Rice. Uh, if you would take a moment to fill out the friendship folder that is in the pew by you and pass it down so we can see who is here today, but also take a moment to look around to see who is here, maybe to see who is not. Connect with them sometime this week and let them know their church thought about them. We have a lot going on in the life of the church this week, of course. We have an ongoing toy drive that ends on Christmas Eve. Bring a new unwrapped toy to help a kiddo that, that we're really, that would be a light for them this season. Today, after this service, we have a celebration potluck. It is at 1130 up in Fellowship Hall. I encourage you to stick around and head up there after service. Christmas Eve worship, so Saturday we have a noon family service, 5 o'clock traditional service, and 7 o'clock contemporary service. I really hope you come to that. There are postcards laying around the church. Grab one for you and grab one to invite a friend. On Christmas Day, we have a community breakfast at 9 a.m. instead of worship, and then at 10.30 a.m. we will have a service of carols and a, and a message that morning. So come celebrate Christmas morning with us. There's a lot going on in the life of Sunrise, so I invite you to look online for more information for events and to subscribe to our newsletter for links and more. So at this time, I invite us now to return to
Long ago, the prophet Daniel saw a vision. He saw a human form, a son of man, arriving in a whirl of clouds. The Messiah came to the Ancient of Days and was presented to him. He was given power to rule all the glory of royalty. Everyone, race, color, and creed served him. His rule would be forever, never ending. His rule would never be replaced. We come to celebrate the presence of the Messiah among us in the form of a baby.
If any of you have kids that want to go to Sunday school, or if you have kids that you want to go to Sunday school, <laughs> now's the time for that. You can just follow our children's choir out the door in the back. <clears throat> the prophet Isaiah in poetry and vivid imagery foretells the coming of the Messiah, the light of the world. A green shoot will sprout from Jesse's stump, from his roots a budding branch. The life-giving Spirit of God will hover over him, the Spirit that brings wisdom and understanding, the Spirit that gives direction and builds strength, the Spirit that instills knowledge. He won't judge by appearances, won't decide on the basis of hearsay. He'll judge the needy by what is right, render decisions on earth's poor with justice. His words will bring everyone to awed attention. Each morning, he'll put on sturdy work clothes and boots and build righteousness and faithfulness in the land. The whole earth will be brimming with knowing God, a living knowledge of God, the light of the world.
in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to the Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning, you're beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how? I've never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. And did you know that your cousin Elizabeth conceived a son, old as she is? Everyone called her barren, and here she is, six months pregnant. Nothing you see is impossible with God. And Mary said, yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say. Then the angel left her. Mary didn't waste a minute. She got up and traveled to a town in Judah in the hill country, straight to Zechariah's house, and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb leaped. She was filled with the Holy Spirit and sang out exuberantly. You're so blessed among women, and the babe in your womb also blessed. And why am I so blessed that the mother of my Lord visits me? The moment the sound of your greeting entered my ears, the babe in my womb skipped like a lamb for sheer joy. Blessed woman who believed what God said, believed every word would come true. And then Mary sang a song of joy. Today we lift up her words and hold them in our hearts as if they were her own.
It is a familiar story how Mary and Joseph ended up in Bethlehem. Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. The news of the newborn king could not be kept silent. The heavens opened up to a display of angels and their songs. 
The shepherds were there in the fields to witness the light breaking through the night. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town, a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights, peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. This baby boy was given power to rule, all the glory of royalty. Everyone, race, color, and creed served him. His rule would be forever, never ending. His rule would never be replaced. Under his rule, the blind see, the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. All people on earth learn that God is on their side. This is the king we come to celebrate today.
people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who lived in a land of deep shadows, light, sunbursts of light. You repopulated the nation, you expanded its joy. Oh, they're so glad in your presence, festival joy. The joy of a great celebration, sharing rich gifts and warm greetings. For a child has been born for us, the gift of a son for us. He'll take over the running of the world. His names will be Amazing Counselor, Strong God, Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness. His ruling authority will grow and there will be no limits to the wholeness he brings. As we move into our time of offering, be in prayer together. Lord of light and love and grace, we are grateful for this moment, for this space, for you reminding us year after year of your love and light in the world. And we take this moment now to give back. Use our gifts to spread your and light in the world. Amen. we have a little more joyful noise to make. Um, I'd like to invite you to stand and sing with us our closing hymn, This is Joy to the World. Um, it's a little different arrangement. It's a little bigger arrangement, but you'll get the hang of it. Please stand as you're able.
Are you still catching your breath? <laughs> you guys, can we please give them, like David, all of them, thank you. Well done today. Um, so uh, a few, like eight months ago, seven, eight months ago, we asked David to help us out for a couple of months doing the director of music position. Um, we are so grateful he made it all the way to Christmas and it was amazing. This was an amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you, David. Will you please, no, stand back up to receive the benediction. <laughs> and don't forget, there is food upstairs, and you are invited to stay and eat. Oh, go forth carrying the gift of light and love and hope and peace into the world. Amen.